Good morning from Oxnard, California, home of the Dallas Cowboys. This will be the first day of Cowboys practice. And of course, we'll be there, the 75 member staff, as we like to call it, all over uh, the campus and all over town with the Cowboys. We'll bring you over the course of the day full reports on contract movements, injury updates, and practice field highlights and lowlights. Uh, 6 p.m. tonight, Central Time, we'll do fish at 6, of course. So it'll be 4 p.m. California time. We are loaded for bar all day long and all week long here with the Cowboys in Oxnard, 7.20 every morning, of course, breakfast at Fishinies and at CowboysSI.com. All along, we want you to be a part of it. So would you please hit the like button that beats the algorithms and gives you the muscle as a fish head in Cowboy Nation. And would you please subscribe to what we do here? It's absolutely free and worth every penny. Let's first get to the Diggs contract breakdown, and then we will get to Dak is Favre. What? Uh, and then we'll touch on a Terrence Steele related story while we still wait on Zach Martin, of course. First to the Diggs deal. And what I like so much about it is, first of all, it, I, it helps get rid of Cap Boy, the Cap Boy criticism, which is so juvenile. Uh, and that should be on the verge of dying now. I also like that Diggs didn't go in there and demand, I want to be the high, highest paid cornerback in football. He could have. Uh, at which point the Cowboys would have said no and then tagged him next year at $17 million. It's just that simple. The, the compromise in this case was just that simple. So what if we make you the fifth highest paid cornerback in football? Not the first, not the 12th. And that's what they did. Uh, 19.4 million average APY. That is the fifth highest contract in football. Now, uh, this is a five-year deal. The Cowboys, of course, hope that Diggs doesn't come back in three years and say, let's redo it. Uh, the kind of headache that they're having right now with Zach Martin. Uh, another thing that I like about it is we have talked quite a bit, and I've had my one-on-ones with Jerry on this, and you've seen him and read him. Uh, Mr. Mack, I still got that wild cat in me. Okay, then let's see you write the big check. Well, this is a 21 Point two five million dollar bonus, uh, as Matthew Jackson points out, with a twenty dollar pitch in into the brief fund. That's the super chat here. Diggs deal making approximately nineteen uh, twenty a year. Yeah, I mean nineteen point four. Isn't that a huge chunk of Cherry's pie? Yeah, but absolutely calculated. Uh, in fact, we we've, we've put him down for twenty. That he's a twenty million dollar cornerback. Um, now, the next question is going to be, what do they put down in, in the regard to their pie plan? How much of the pie is allocated to eventually doing lamb? Because he's in there, too. And as Jerry told me yesterday, in regard to the integrity of honoring a contract, the Zach pie is already cut. And they don't want to screw with that. And, and I understand why. I think it's easy to understand both sides. Uh, good morning, Fish, says Daniel Peckham. Been a member here for Uncle Fish Premium for two months. BJ, I get the feeling that Jerry's a little frustrated with Zach. Your feeling is correct. Uh, and if you saw the video, um, I think I posted that video. If I didn't, I'll get it up soon. I believe I did, uh, where where I'm I'm asking him about what you're able to do historically with a compromise. And he didn't like the idea very much. And that's where he talked about the integrity of a contract. So Diggs is done and Jerry writes the big check. Streaker, I think Diggs left money on the table intentionally for his teammates to get more. It's a lovely thought. But but this fits into the $20 million pie and the $20 million piece of pie. And Jerry writes a big check. So uh, some of the ideas that the Cowboys have talked about and boasted about have been borne out here. Contract integrity, by the way, the players will argue back, well, what about when you cut me? Well, that's part of the system. And I suppose that the player side could argue, and you know what else is part of the system? Holding out. And then the teams counter by, well, okay, you could do that, but your own CBA that you signed is going to end up punishing you at $50,000 a day. Jason Balaban, contract integrity was a direct message and a missive to Zach Prescott. That's right. Mike Fisher's question, Jerry's answer, Zach's supposed to hear it. That's exactly right. Now to Dak Prescott. 
and shoddy with an interesting evaluation. And uh, as with any um, any player you're working with, whether it's a star player, or a great player or not, just like any student you're working with or any actor you're with, you, you want to make him better, but you don't want to insult him. And so here we go with Shoddy being involved now in the installation of the Texas Coast offense and his direct working with Zach. And this would be their first time with this kind of relationship, obviously, with Kellen Moore now gone. Kellen Moore, by the way, uh, here for all of Dak's previous seven seasons as either a player, a coach, mentor, or whatever. So that's going to be a change. The Cowboys feel like the change is fine. The change is good. The concerns might be a little overblown. The critics might be a little bit overwrought. But I think we'll all agree that for the Cowboys to reach where they want to go, it makes sense that Dak, who led the NFL with 15 interceptions last season and is now working inside this new Texas Coast offense, he must also reach his peak. Let me say it again. For the Cowboys to reach their peak this is the way football works. The quarterback must reach his peak. This team and no team is good enough to drag along a mediocre quarterback. That won't work. So, yes, Dallas is a critic's go-to talking point, as Dak told us not long ago, and not always fairly so. But now we got training camp opening up, and the Cowboys themselves are talking about this same talking point. So here's Shoddy, Brian Schottenheimer, the new quarterback, coach, uh, new uh, offensive coordinator. Well, he certainly doesn't need to be fixed, Shoddy says. There's no question about that. The guy's a great player. I mean, he can go out there, and he's going to compete. I can make that throw. Okay. He doesn't need to be fixed, says Shoddy, but <laughs> but he also indicated that sometimes that confidence, I can make that throw, can cause, oh, any quarterback to want to take on that make that throw challenge when he shouldn't. And that's where Shoddy's comparison to Brett Favre comes in. Quote from Schottenheimer, one of my early experiences as a coordinator was with the Jets 2008. By the way, they were good with Schottenheimer, real good as a coordinator. And I was coaching Brett Favre. And he said, you guys have seen Favre play. He'd force the ball into traffic. Then he'd come over to me on the sideline, and I'd be like, dude, what are you doing? And he'd say, well, yeah, my bad, but, Shotty, I can make that throw. I can make that throw. And Schottenheimer would tell him, I know you can, but we didn't need you to, even if it was completed. We, we, didn't, we, we didn't need that risk at this time, let alone bouncing balls, interceptions, all the rest. So Schottenheimer says, there's the competitive spirit. These guys all have that. And then he says, and this is the Favre but. Do, do you want you want Dak to have Favre's competitive spirit? Of course you do, and he does. Uh, th does he have some attributes that he shares that are positive with Favre? Absolutely. But Schottenheimer says, Dak loves some of the things we're doing from training, the footwork, the timing, the rhythm. He's going to have a great year. But, <laughs> but, and I appreciate Schottenheimer's gentle butts here. He's got to understand situations of the game, down and distance. Clean up some of the decisions that he knows last year he kind of missed. So <laughs> the Favre comp is encouraging and scary all at the same time. Now, I'm going to say this again and, and see if you agree with me. This is the first time, this might be the first time anybody's ever said this. He's got to understand situations of the game and down in distance. It's not saying he doesn't, but he's got to understand it better, all that stuff, and clean up some of the decisions that he knows last year he kind of missed. There's been a lot of analysis of Prescott's interceptions and who's to blame. This marks a rare public pronouncement from the Cowboys on Dak's level of responsibility here. And I think this is a, a nice, subtle suggestion that it wasn't just bouncing balls and bad routes. Rem comes into the Uncle Fish Premium Club. Thank you for that. Is that a, is that a, I think that's a smart way for the coordinator to do this, for the player's coach to do this. But can we all agree that that's the right way to package this. Chris T, Uncle Fish Premium, suggests that Kellen was too close to Dak personally to tell him, whoa, what are we doing here? That's not bad. 
Whereas Schottenheimer saying, listen, I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to be your friend here. I'm watching film with you of all these things. And I'm saying, yeah, that was a bad route. Yeah, that was a bad break, but that was a bad decision. Richard Stagg, Uncle Fish Premium Fish, what's going on with the VIP booths? Uh, we'll find out more today. There's a VIP section that you can buy yourself into, and that's always been the case. I, I'll, Richard, there's so much VIP room. There, I, I mean, there's only so many Jamie Foxes and Magic Johnsons that are coming to town. So, But I, I will monitor that today, and I'll let you know. Joe Alonzo, good morning, Fish. Love the content. Thank you. BJ, this will be an adjustment for Dax Eagle, maybe, because I, and I hadn't thought of this until you guys brought it up. Was Kellen Moore hard on him? David Lon Carr, this is what Dak needs. Somebody to be a little hard on him. Onion, Dak has had great years and y'all were still bitching. Not y'all, Onion, not y'all. I've made the strong point here that before last year, Dak Prescott averaged eight interceptions a year and argued in favor of shutting down this idea that it's in Dak's DNA. And that even last year with the 15 interceptions, it still raises his annual interception average to nine. Not, not from this end of Cowboys coverage does Dak Prescott get beat up unnecessarily. I'm telling you now, as I do all the time, Straight dope, no bullshit. This is the first time that anybody has publicly said these things about Dak. I don't know if it's the first time they've said it privately, but it's about the first time they've said it publicly. Uh, Hurt Family wants to know more about the Diggs contract breakdown. What I have so far is five years, 97 million, 21 bonus incentives that can take it up to 104, an average of 19.4. Uh, that's the APY fifth highest in the league. How the cap gets juggled out, uh, obviously it'll have more impact on the cap. It'll take a piece out of the cap because his previous salary was four and a half million dollars. We'll try to break that down today as we go. Uh, Broken Halo says the Texas Coast offense hoodies are coming into the store. There's the Uncle Fish store right below. You can go get that at noon today. That's when more Texas Coast offense stuff uh, is going to pop in the store. It'll also pop on the practice field because uh, a certain quarterback that we're talking about uh, is a big fan. Is a big fan. Red Dog, looking sharp, Fish. Look good, you play good. And, and it's practice day, I already say. Uh, one more item here, and this is about Terrence Steele. And no, as of late last night, uh, Zach Martin had not yet shown up. But in the offensive line, Terrence Steele, who is not going on the pup list, as we told you uh, last week, would be the case. That, that mean, he, he, might, he might ramp up slowly, but he's not going on pup. That's, that's the plan. Titus Howard, right tackle, just signed a new deal, I mean, this morning, in Texas, with the, te and with the Texans. And it's, a, it's an extension, three years, $56 million. I think that's $18 million a year. Okay. Now, I'm not saying Terrence Steele is Titus Howard. He's not. But what I'm going to ask around about today is, did the Titus, does the Titus Howard deal at $18 million for a right tackle, does that raise what Terrence Steele wants just a little bit? I bet you Terrence Steele wakes up this morning and goes, hello, Titus. So we'll keep you posted on that and all things Cowboys as well. Please uh, go to CowboysSI.com and click on there about, oh, I don't know, every hour or so, and you will be rewarded with the goods here in Oxnard. I appreciate you coming along for the ride. Thanks for hitting the like button too. And please do subscribe to what we do here. It's absolutely free and worth every moment. Roy Smith, you are so devoted to what we do that uh, and he, he can he can see in the background and see that my bucket hat's been sitting there for two days. <laughs> um, uh, you know what? I'm going to move it. I'm going to gaslight you and I'm going to move it around and uh, and get you all confused. Uh, once again, CowboysSI.com is the place. Thank you for subscribing here, Fish Out.